This conference will now be recorded. Всех приветствую на веб-семинаре в учебном центре «Специалист», авторизованном учебном центре Совета по электронной коммерции и секансов. Меня зовут Сергей Клевогин, я инструктор, и мы не в первый раз собираемся на семинарах, которые проводим в дополнение к курсам. Мы различные вопросы обсуждаем на семинарах, то какую-то технику хакерскую обсудим, а то новости мира информационной безопасности или новости по обновлению курса. Сегодня у нас особенный семинар. Я вот даже анонс сразу на английском языке показываю, потому что у нас в гостях представитель Совета по электронной коммерции и Сиканцу. Совет по электронной коммерции – это организация, которая курсы по хакингу, по безопасности придумала, авторизовала, а мы, как авторизованный учебный центр, проводим курсы в нашем учебном центре. Я, конечно, мог бы и сам рассказать о том, что нового в курсе Certified Network Defender. Но я думаю, лучше нам послушать первоисточник от вендора. И у нас в гостях представитель EC Council, Country Manager, Faisal Shabir. So, I will do Faisal Presenter right now. And uh, he will explain us uh, what's news uh, in uh, Certified Network Defender and uh, Certified Ethical Hacker program, what's news in tools, in labs. So I will do Faisal Presenter and uh, welcome Faisal. Thank you very much, uh, Sergey. Привет uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, next time, I will ensure that I will learn a good amount of uh, the Russian language before I present. And uh, I promise you that I'm going to do that very soon. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going to be presenting in English today. And I hope that is okay for uh, everyone in the room. Well, uh, once again, good evening for everyone. And my name is Faisal Shabir, and I'm the country manager uh, at EC Council, uh, looking after a few Eastern European uh, countries, uh, and uh, as well as uh, some of the other countries with reference to uh, Russia, Ukraine, Turkey, and Israel as well. Uh, this is the agenda which we are going to be following today. Um, I will be taking uh, about 30 to 35 minutes of your time today, where we are going to cover topics with reference to uh, introducing EC Council, followed by what the cybersecurity threat landscape looks like today. Moving on to the VAPT track. So what is uh, the uh, elements or what are the contents of the vulnerability assessment and penetration track? Followed by the Certified Network Defender Program, what the program is all about and what are the features of the program. Uh, and then I will move on to our next certification program, which is CEH. So uh, what ethical hacking is all about, followed by a live lab demonstration where I'm going to be showing a social engineering attack where how easily the hacker steals user credentials from a victim through cloning a website. So we are going to look at that shortly followed by uh, some of the programs and features of the CEH version 11. And to end my session, I will be talking about who is actually looking for cybersecurity professionals and why cybersecurity is uh, one of the most lucrative industries uh, in the world today. And then followed by some question and answer sessions, which I think we can cover up uh, at the end of the session. I always start my, uh, my session with a very famous quote by Robert Muller, who's the FBI director. And he says that there are only two types of companies, those that have been hacked and those that will be hacked. I mean, for me, this is a very, very important quote because in today's world, each 
and every organization has to ensure that they have the right amount of security controls in place to ensure that they do not get or they do not become a victim of a cyber attack, right? We have been hearing a lot of news nowadays. I mean, you open up your social media, you open up uh, your, your local newspapers, somewhere around the world, you see some sort of a data breach or a ransomware attack or a malware attack. You know, there is multiple amounts of attacks which has been happening, uh, which we've been hearing quite a while. And especially because of the, uh, the situation we all are in, which is the pandemic world. You know, we are living in the COVID world at the moment. Uh, you know, because of COVID, the number of attacks as well has increased tremendously, right? So uh, the, uh, the intention here is that each and every organization has to ensure that they have the right security controls and they have the right security people working in those organizations to ensure that the organization stays protected at every point of time. So to give you a glance about EC Council, EC Council, we are the world's largest cybersecurity certification and training body in the world. Our certifications are accredited by the NIS framework, which is a national initiative for cybersecurity education, and as well as the ANISA framework as well. Some of the uh, some of the members of uh, of EC Council, the certified members, are uh, professionals from the U.S. Army, from the Department of Defense, from the FBI, as well as some of the other larger organizations in the technology field, which is Microsoft and IBM as well. Uh, as EC Council, uh, we are here more than 15 years uh, in the industry and have more than 230 to 240 thousand members globally having more than 700 partners all across the globe and spread more than 145 countries so before i talk about our uh, programs uh, i would like to first give you a bit of an instance of what the threat landscape looks like today what i'm going to show you now is uh, some of the largest organizations in the world today who have been a victim of a data breach Right now, what I'm going to show you is right from the year 2004. If you start seeing the bubble keeps getting bigger and bigger, which means that the amount of data breaches has started alarmingly increasing at every point of time in each and every organization we talk about today. Now, if you look at the names out there, they are some of the largest organizations. You're talking about Equifax, you're talking about Anthem, you're talking about Fitness Pal. So these are all multiple uh, organizations who have been a victim of a data breach, right? As for the World Economic Forum, it states that uh, cybersecurity or cyber attack is regarded a global risk. As I have mentioned, we live in a pandemic world. And if you look at the screen out here on the right hand side, you will see infectious diseases as staying on the top of the global risk landscape, right? We have been seeing that because of COVID, millions and millions of businesses have lost, have been lost. A lot of uh, deaths have happened as well, which means that the, the, the kind of risk which the COVID has brought in this world today has been devastating for everyone. Similarly, when you look at the short term and the long term outlook, cyber attack is regarded as among the top in terms of a global risk. And it compares uh, with regards to some of the other global risks we see, which is the terrorist attacks. You're looking at uh, extreme weather conditions. You're looking at, uh, you know, these, uh, as I mentioned, infectious diseases. Similarly, cyber attack is, is, is comes uh, among the same lines. When you're looking at the cost of cyber attacks, these are some of the largest organizations around the world in multiple industries who have already lost millions and millions of dollars uh, due to cyber attack. You're talking about uh, industries such as insurance or the high-tech industries, the energy sector, the media industries as well. And as we see the next five years, cyber crime is set to move on to trillions and trillions of dollars. What you're seeing in the slide now is some of the attacks which has happened globally in some of the largest organizations. What I'm going to talk to you today is about two uh, important elements or two important attacks. One of them is pertaining to uh, Russia itself. Uh, I'm sure that you must have heard of the uh, ropeway, which is the cable care, the cable car cyber attack, uh, which happened in the year 2018, where suddenly the cable car stopped. 
uh, in the middle, you know, while it was transporting people. And finally, when this was figured out, it was found out that it was due to a cyber attack. Now, uh, luckily, uh, you know, there was not a major catastrophe there. But uh, imagine that, you know, this would have uh, led to a devastating effect. You will find millions and millions, you know, you would find actually people just stranded across in the cable car without uh, any sort of a movement. And you could see the kind of uh, risk uh, the uh, kind of a cyber attack has faced out here uh, in Moscow. I would also like to give you an example of uh, TravelX. If you all know, TravelX is, uh, is a multi-house uh, exchange company where they have their branches all around the world at multiple airports, right? When we're talking about the New Year's Eve, uh, that's when uh, TravelX was faced by a ransomware attack due to which they all their systems were completely shut off and in order for their systems to get back to normal they had to pay 2.3 million dollars as a ransom which was a huge financial impact for an organization like travelix similarly we do know a lot of other organizations as well who have lost millions and millions of dollars just because they were a victim of a cyber attack so as we move on the government as well has been focusing a lot in terms of improving the cybersecurity infrastructure all around the world, right? When, so, so the example what you look, look at here is in some of the countries, uh, we're talking about some of the European countries and some of the other countries as well, where cybersecurity is being treated as, uh, as, as, as uh, some sort of a strategy where the, the government has to take a lot of importance on and has to put in a lot of investment to ensure that the country is safe for some kind of attacks. As, uh, as I spoke about the COVID-19 scams, uh, since last year, and as we speak today, the amount of scams have just been increasing on a daily basis. You know, I'm sure that each and every one of you uh, in this webinar today must have received some sort of an email which states uh, that, uh, you know, probably if you want to improve or if you want to protect yourself from COVID, you know, uh, please go on to the link and, uh, you know, see for yourself how you can protect yourself from uh, from uh, a COVID attack or COVID uh, situation, right? Whereas these kind of links are malicious of nature. So we have to be extremely careful in terms of the kind of links you need to access on a daily basis. So moving on from the cybersecurity threat landscape, uh, I would now move on to what we are going to speak about today which is the new VAPT track or the Vulnerability Assessment and Penetration track. Now, this track consists of three certification programs. The first one, which is the entry-level program, is the CND program, the Certified Network Defense, followed by the Certified Ethical Hacker, and then we move on to the Certified Penetration Tester, which ultimately has the potential of any professional to become a licensed penetration tester. So this is something which uh, our Vulnerability Assessment and Penetration track covers. Certified network defense, as simple as possible. I would only talk about four main aspects which the certified network defense covers, which is protect, detect, respond, and predict, right? So as we move on, why do you need to choose the CND certification? I would like to highlight giving five important points. Point number one is, it focuses more on operations and processes rather than just technology. So, you know, when we're just not talking about technology or it is just not that you are learning about technology. You're also learning about the different kind of operational elements involved within your network infrastructure, within your network security. So it basically covers the entire operational uh, structure in a network of any organization. So that is what uh, you have been taught in, uh, in the CND program as point number one. Point number two, it tackles real life problems in real time, which means that the course is 50% lab intensive because uh, we do not believe in just uh, providing courses where it is more of a learning element. It should be more of a hands-on experience, which means you need to have a live lab experience in terms of the, uh, the different kinds of network defense uh, you know, elements which you're going to learn in the CND program. Followed by point number three, which is, a concise but detailed learning, which means that, you know, you might finish the course in five days, but within that time limit of completing your CND course, it teaches you extremely in detail in terms of what 
is covered in network defense you know to give you a bit more highlight onto it cnd program today is known to be one of the best network defense program in the market and it is being uh, renowned by the gchq as well based out of uk uh, and they regard cnd program as being that it is nothing in the world which is compared to any other program which can offer the kind of network defense which cnd can cover point number four it's among the top seven jobs in demand i mean I, I'm, I'm sure that you guys all know that you know in any organization networks are always there and in order to protect those networks you need network security professionals so it is a highly demanded job in the market today followed by point number five the salaries salaries are extremely it is high in comparison to some of the other industries we're talking about today now again you know you're looking at multiple areas you're looking at just you know starting off from being a network administrator followed by being a network administrator with some of the other uh let's say skills you might have that that is talking about uh configuring switches or firewalls and you know other installation techniques as well so you know multiple uh professions have different kinds of salary brackets they can uh they can uh, come up with so what is the cnd program and what it covers uh again i've covered this already uh in my previous slide but just to uh, highlight a bit more about it it maps to the NICE framework, which is the National Initiative for Cybersecurity Education, right? Uh, so that is an extremely important point, followed by it is very, very lab intensive. As I've mentioned, 50% of the lab exercises are pertaining to the CND program. It enhances more on threat prediction. I mean, this is a very important point because none of the other network defense programs covers threat intelligence. CND is the only program which actually covers a lot of elements of threat intelligence. Now, when you are in a cybersecurity professional, it is extremely important for you to have all kinds of knowledge and elements related to threat intelligence, right? Because based on that is what you're going to uh, manage your incident handling uh, or you know any kind of forensic investigation you need to do. It's all related to your predictions, right? And followed by uh you know the four pronged approach which is the protect detect respond and predict which i'm going to explain in detail at a later stage so we're talking about the blue world so uh if you're talking if, if uh you know if you've seen the vapt uh track which i had explained earlier you know we're talking about the red world and the blue world so when you're talking about the blue world you're talking about the defensive world which is what cnd is about but when you're talking about the red world, you're talking about the offensive world, which is CEH, which is the ethical hacker uh, version, which I'm going to show you about a little bit later on. Now, the new blue world or the CND program covers the elements what you see on the screen, which is uh, it covers the IoT, it covers virtualization. Now, we all are living in a virtual world. We all are working from homes, which means that we all are accessing virtual applications you know be it over the cloud be it any other platform you're looking at right followed by uh, mobile and cloud uh, as well so it covers in detail with relation to cloud security elements as well followed by threat intelligence the various attack surfaces we're looking at today the kinds of data attacks we see the data breaches the kind of data breaches you see as well as uh, adaptive security so these are some of the elements which is covered in the new cnd version so talking about the four pronged approach or the predict protect detect and respond i would like to explain giving you an example of a thief entering into your home okay so when when you know that uh, you need to protect your home the first thing what you'll do which is the prediction part of it is you're going to predict how the thief is going to enter into your home it could be from the front door or it could be from your back door or maybe it could be from the window or maybe from the from the roof you may never know right so you need to first have a prediction analysis in terms of where the thief is going to enter from right followed by protection so which means that if you know what your prediction mentality is then you're going to protect all your doors so you're going to have the all kinds of strong uh, uh, you know controls uh, strong kind of locking controls on your doors on your windows on your back doors you have to ensure that all your areas are protected perfectly later on let's say that the thief has already entered right you need to figure out how he has entered right so basically you're going to look at the, uh, the detection mentality so you're going to detect the areas where he entered whether he actually entered from the from the door 
whether he entered from the window, you know, what are the elements he actually uh, entered from, and then followed by your response mentality. So how are you going to respond to it? So let's say that the theft has actually happened. How are you going to respond to it? Which means that you will ensure that you implement the right locking systems in your doors and your windows so that you don't ensure so that you ensure that the thief never enters your home again similarly the network defender follows a similar pattern right when you talk about prediction you're talking about your attack surface analysis you're looking at your threat intelligence right you're looking at the different kinds of risk management uh, uh, mentalities you're going to look at so this is your prediction uh, uh, area followed by protection so you're looking at the multiple platforms you're going to protect on you're looking at your mobile platforms your iot platform your cloud as well as your virtualization so these are some uh, uh platforms which you're looking at in terms of the protection followed by the detection uh program so in the terms of detection you're looking you're going to look at your network traffic you're going to look at your different logs let's say that you might have a seam solution in place you need to look at the multiple logs in terms of where the attack has come from how do you need to mitigate those attacks? So this is what you're going to look at in terms of your detection mentality and followed by response. So then you're going to work on your incident response uh, techniques. You're going to look at your forensic investigation mentality. You're going to look at your disaster recovery elements in terms of how you're going to uh, you know, recover a, a kind of a disaster which has already happened in form of an attack, right? So these four elements is uh, strongly covered in the CND program and I believe that this is the entire, uh, let's say, end-to-end -end requirement for any cybersecurity professional to have knowledge on for any organization he is working for. Now, why should employees choose CND over other network security programs? The only program, CND is the only program which actually uh, uh, allows employees to deploy all kinds of network infrastructure on a continuous basis, which means that you're looking at different network elements. You're looking at your cloud, you're looking at your mobile, you're looking at your OT and your IoT environments as well. So you're looking at multiple environments and CND uh, as a network defense uh, professional, you know, he will have the knowledge to cover all these elements covered. And then as I had already explained earlier, uh, he's going to look at all those four elements, which is protection, detection, response and predict and then finally implement all kinds of threat intelligence systems in place also to ensure that no such hacks or attacks happens in the coming upcoming future so uh, what is covered in the latest version cnd2 as i said it is a lot lab intensive so in comparison to the previous version which was version one there are six more modules which has been uh, included, which I'm going to show you in my next slide, followed by 90 iLabs modules. So in comparison to the previous version, which only had about 42 different modules, the latest version has 90 different modules. What is the latest technology updates we're looking at? Again, I'm not going to go very detailed and elaborate into it, but what you see in the screen is some of the elements or some of the latest technology uh, areas we're looking at, which is covering your virtualization security, covering your enterprise mobile de device security elements. You're looking at the enterprise cloud security elements as well, the threat intelligence vectors, uh, your attack surface analysis. So there are multiple areas you're looking at. You're looking at your zero trust security. So these are some of the key elements which is covered in the latest CND version two followed by who can actually transition from their current job role into the network defense. So, you know, you, you, we, we have a, a lot of, uh, and I'm sure that uh, in, the, uh, in our session today, we will have uh, CCNA certified professionals, we will have MCSE certified professionals as well. Now, in case if you want to move into a more detailed network defense program, then it is exactly for you who really want to transition from their current role to uh, uh, to a completely 100% network defense role followed by those professionals who are already in the network domain who are already working as network administrators who are network engineers and analysts uh, it is also for them uh, you know in order to upskill their uh, their own knowledge is uh, is important for them to do to uh, to do your cnd version 2 so uh, here it gives you uh, an explanation in terms of comparison between uh, some of the other programs we've seen in the market today, right? So uh, no doubt uh, CCNA, which is uh, 
provided by Cisco, whereas Microsoft, these are as well some of the important courses which uh, uh, every network uh, security professional should undertake. But when you talk about uh, the elements which are covered in the courses, now a CCNA basically teaches you uh, certain elements about your network security configurations and administration as well, specifically related to Cisco devices. When you talk about Microsoft, it, it teaches you about system administration techniques using Microsoft Windows systems. So you see CCNA and Microsoft targets uh, vendor specific um, uh, you know, knowledge. When you move on to Security Plus, which is offered by CompTIA, uh, Security Plus is more of an entry level kind of a certification and it is very, very conceptual learning. But when you talk about certified network defense, you're talking about a vendor neutral certification. You're talking about each and every elements of network defense, right? It also prepares students in terms of strategies, the various kinds of cybersecurity strategy you should have in place, the technological aspects of it, as well as in terms of operational network security elements, right? It covers advanced network security concepts, practices, tools, all sorts of procedures, design elements, you know, how the development happens, how the security has to, be managed across uh, you know every aspect and how you neutralize all sorts of threats so if you look at it the cnd program covers each and every element in a very detailed manner the closest program which uh, which uh, uh, competes with CND is the CompTIA Security Plus. Now, this slide here actually gives you a very detailed information in terms of the contents available in the CND version, right? And if you notice here, most of the latest technology is already covered in the CND version. Uh, uh, and especially, as I mentioned, threat intelligence, which is also not covered in Sec Plus and which is hard, which is clearly, clearly uh, an important element which is covered in the CND domain. So. This slide actually gives you uh, detailed uh, information in terms of what are all the uh, different uh, technology uh, structures which you can learn in the CND version. What's the need for network security uh, professionals in the market? Now, when you look at the network security market as such, it has been growing tremendously. Right from the year 2019, when we had seen $168.27 billion as the growth rate of network security market, it is bound to reach $273.58 billion by the year 2027. And in order to cover that gap, which they're going to see in the network security market, they need to have the right amount of network security professionals working there in order to ensure that the networks are uh, protected, right? Right, so that uh, completes our CND version. I am now going to move on to ethical hacking. So, to before uh, before I explain you about ethical hacking, I would like to first talk about what it is all about. Now, if you look at the screen here, you're looking at the U.S. president, right? Now, the U.S. president has a secret service team, right? So, a secret service team, the main role of a secret service team is to ensure all kinds of planning coordination and implementation elements to ensure that the president and its family is always safe at every point of time, which means that it has to look at its incident response techniques. It has to ensure that all kinds of threat assessment vectors are looked at so that the president and its family is safe. Similarly, the ethical hacking involves a similar technique, which means that you need to get into the mind of a hacker in order to understand what are the different kind of hacking techniques a hacker uses, right? So it involves using all kinds of hacking tools, techniques, in order to identify all kinds of vulnerabilities you see in the system today. Followed by, it focuses on different kinds of simulation techniques as well, in order to verify what are the different kinds of vulnerabilities seen in the system, right? And obviously the ethical hacker perform such kind of assessments only after the permission of the concerned authorities of the organization. Now, some of the reasons why organizations recruit ethical hackers, okay? So we're talking about uh, first and foremost is definitely to prevent hackers from gaining access into the system's network. I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why, uh, you know, organizations today recruit ethical hackers because they have to ensure that no hackers infiltrates the systems networks, followed by to uncover all kinds of vulnerabilities and risks which you see in a network. Third point, 
to strengthen an organization's security posture. It's extremely, extremely important that all kinds of configurations are done in the right manner and are properly uh, structured in place so that uh, the organization's security posture, policies, infrastructure is uh, perfectly uh, you know, undertaken uh, in a proper, proper manner. And then uh, moving on to uh, our fourth point, which is to avoid all kinds of security breaches. Again, that is uh, one of the main reasons why you have the ethical hacker there, right? You have to ensure that there are all kinds of preventive measures being undertaken to avoid all kinds of security breaches which, uh, which an organization is going to see. You need to safeguard customers' data. That's one of the main reasons because data is extremely important for everyone. You need to have all kinds of confidential data in any every organization we see today. And that is one of the most important priorities of an ethical hacker. And then at the end, you have to ensure security awareness at all levels of business. Now, in an organization, you have uh, the finance team, you have the logistics team, you have a marketing team, you have the front office team. It is the role of an ethical hacker to ensure that all kinds of security awareness training and security awareness tools are there in place within an organization so that any kind of attacks are not uh, uh, occurred in the near future which means that all such kind of attacks are mitigated now we move on to certified ethical hacker we, as we all know, the CEH is the only, only program in the world today which teaches you elements about ethical hacking. It is a program which is owned and created by EC Council. And today, it is one of the most popular cybersecurity uh, course in the world all around. What is covered in the new CEH version 11? So when you talk about version 11, you're talking about multiple new elements which is covered. Starting off from cloud, you're talking about cloud security elements, which is container technology, the dock technology as well, followed by the uh, vulnerability assessment and the penetration tool, which we use is Parrot security. So if you all know, Kali Linux was the, uh, the uh, is also being used uh, uh, quite often, but our latest iLabs module, consists of Parrot OS, which is far more resource friendly than uh, Kali Linux. Moving on, operational technology. Operational technology is a very, very key element which is covered in the ethical hacking version 11. Now, I'm not sure whether you've heard of uh, an attack which happened in US with a Florida water treatment plant. So this particular water treatment plant in Florida uh, what had actually happened is due to an attack, the chemicals in the water treatment were changed. And luckily, uh, you know, because uh, one of the workers there was able to identify it quite early that there seems to be some sort of a problem he's seeing in the chemical uh, structure uh, within his water treatment. He immediately ensured that uh, he stops such kind of production in the new future, right? Now, imagine if that wouldn't have happened, that would have caused a devastating effect just not for the water treatment plant, but we are also talking about the human population within uh, Florida as well. So operational technology covers, uh, you know, uh, areas of manufacturing. Uh, you're talking about um, uh, oil and gas. You're talking about some other energy sectors as well. So this is the entire operational technology element we are talking about. Then you're talking about the different kinds of encryption and cracking technologies. You're talking about malware reverse engineering as well, which is looking at both the static and the dynamic malware analysis vectors, followed by the emerging attack vectors. So you're looking at some of the latest kind of attack vectors we're looking at, which is fileless malware. You're looking at targeted kind of ransomwares. You're talking at different elements there. And then finally, you're talking about the different kind of hacking challenges we see, which is on steroids, which means that such kind of hacking challenges are extremely, extremely, um, uh, you know, uh, professional in nature. Right, so I would now move on to uh, a live lab demonstration where I'm going to be showing you a social engineering attack. So I'm just going to uh, toggle my screen onto my iLabs. Uh, so just let me know if you all can see my screen. So again, okay, maybe you can confirm if you can see my screen. Right, so um, if you look at the uh, uh, the screen, uh, this is how the iLabs module looks like. So on your left-hand side, on your right-hand side, actually, 
uh, you're going to see all the instructions in place, right? In terms of what are the different instructions you're going to uh, witness uh, in the iLabs module. So today what we're going to do is we're going to perform a social engineering attack where uh, we as a hacker, so I'm going to be wearing two hats today. I'm going to be having one hat of a hacker and another hat of a victim. So as a hacker, I'm going to steal the user credentials, which is the username and password from the victim by cloning a website where the victim is going to actually log in in order to uh, access his uh, access the website, right? So first and foremost, now we're going to be seeing how the hacking happens. So I'm going to put in my password. Right, so we are now in Parrot security at the moment. So I'm going to go to the Parrot terminal. And I'm going to get into the root directory. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, get into the social engineering toolkit. Just bear with me in case if there is a bit of a delay um, uh, if you're facing in terms of the network we're having you right so uh, if you look at the list out here we are going to do the social engineering attack which is uh, option number one and then uh, we are going to uh, look at the website attack so the vector is the website attack vector you're looking at so that's option number two followed by the method the attack method which we're going to use which is credential harvesting that's option number three and then we are going to clone a website which is option number two now here we are going to enter the ip address of the website which we're going to clone which is 10.10.10.13 and i'm going to type in the link of the website which we are going to clone so which is moviescope.com now just to let you know moviescope.com is uh, a similar kind of a website just like your netflix and amazon which is more like a streaming website now if you notice in a matter of seconds the website is already cloned now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get into my browser and i'm going to be sending an email to the victim so i am going to log on to my gmail account Right, so I'll just log on to my Gmail account. Followed by the password. Right, I am already in. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just for the interest of time, I've already created an email address. I've already actually created an email. Now, if you look at the email here, I'm giving away a $10 voucher to the victim from Moviescope. So if you if you look at the email very carefully, it uh, pertains to the current situation we are in, which is the global pandemic, right? So uh, I'm going to be enticing the victim to click on this link so if you hover your mouse on this link you can actually see the that it is actually directing you to the cloned website which is 10.10.10.30 and if you look at the email it looks very genuine you know with the logo of movie scope and stuff so here i'm going to now send this email to the victim and the email is gone now what i'm going to do is i am now going to log on to windows terminal and uh as as a victim so i'm now going to change my hat and i'm going to wear the hat of a victim and i'm now going to log into my windows in order to check my email Right, we are in Windows right now. Uh, I'm now going to get onto the browser and uh, get onto my Gmail account.
right so i'm going to use the gmail uh, address i'm going to log on to my account demo at dot com followed by the password right so i happen to see that i have received an email from moviescope I'm very happy to see that, wow, I have won a $10 voucher. That's amazing. And I go on and click on the link. As soon as I click on the link, it takes me to the clone website. Now, in this website, I'm now going to give my username and password. So let's say my username is F-A-I-Z-A-L, followed by the password, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I log in. And I happen to see nothing happens. So now if I move on to back to Parrot security, and if you notice, I have successfully as a hacker managed to steal the username and credential of the victim. Now imagine we all have this habit of using similar username and password across multiple platforms. We're talking about your social media account, be it your Facebook, be it Twitter, be it your LinkedIn, or sometimes even your banks, or sometimes even your other websites like movie streaming websites or any sort of websites we have this habit of using the same username and password because it is easier for us to remember but if a hacker is able to steal user credential from just one website imagine how devastating that is going to be when he is going to get access to multiple other platforms of yours so that uh, gives you uh, an instance about what social engineering is and uh, the module of social engineering in our iLabs module I would now move on to the presentation back again. Right, so what is covered in the Ethical Hacker version 11? Uh, we have the same kind of modules, which means we have 20 modules, but when looking at the iLabs, we have almost 204 labs, which is 93 new labs have been added on. In terms of the operating systems, we're talking about uh, some of the server operating systems, which is Windows Server 2019 and 2016, followed by the Windows 10 Home Edition. And then uh, the, uh, the, the vulnerability assessment and penetration tool, which we're using, which is Parrot Security. So these are some of the other operating systems we see in the latest uh, Ethical Hacker version uh, iLab session. Some technology updates in the Ethical Hacker version. So as I've mentioned, uh, we're talking about OT and IoT as well, which is uh, extensively covered in the uh, latest version. So you're talking about the IoT hacking concepts, you're talking about the cloud co computing concepts, followed by some of the latest malware threats and the enumeration uh, areas as well. So these are some of the new technology updates which is covered in the Ethical Hacker version 11. Some of the common job roles we see uh, for CEH professionals, you know, right from being a security administrator all the way from uh, becoming a technology and cybersecurity auditor, you know, there is multiple kind of jobs available there in the market for every ethical hacker uh, profession. Now, when you talk about the complete track of the uh, ethical hacker certification, so first and foremost, you have a knowledge base. So you're looking at a four hour multiple choice exam only, which will entitle you to get your ethical hacker certification, the CEH certificate. But then most, uh, mostly what happens is that, you know, once you get onto the real world, you need to have the live knowledge and the skills uh, which is pertaining to uh, hacking and that is why it is important for you to also attempt on the ceh practicals now the ceh practical is a six hour long ex uh, exam and it is more of challenges it is not a multiple choice exam but it consists of 20 uh, you know effective and tough challenges which you have to complete and for that you have been given six hours now you as a professional, if you complete your 4 hour CEH exam and you complete your CEH practical exam, you are then entitled to become a CEH master. Once you become a CEH master, just to let you know, we have uh, an ethical hacker leaderboard. Now, when you talk about the leaderboard, this is uh, on our website. All those professionals who have 
got very good percentages in their ceh master uh, you know once they complete their ceh and their practicals they've got a very good percentage their name with their picture appears in the leader in the hacking ethical hacker leading uh, leaderboard what are the employment opportunities we are looking at so if you're looking at the cybersecurity workforce the gap is huge there is still a requirement of 4.7 million professionals globally that is the, the the workforce gap we see in the cybersecurity field some of the jobs uh, we see uh, today which is pertaining to a requirement now if you look at some of the jobs which is listed most of these jobs what i am showing you here on the screen is in moscow itself and if you notice the kind of jobs which is an application security engineer or a cyber security analyst everywhere there is a requirement of uh, ceh so it is a mandatory requirement now for all those uh, professionals to have uh, the ceh certification completed why do you choose a career in cyber security now this is a very important slide for me number one zero percent unemployment which means that literally there is a role for every cyber security professional in any kind of uh, uh, you know a department which he gets into within the cyber security team right so which is literally there is no unemployment in the entire uh, uh, you know industry when you look at it. it's one of the fastest growing industries for sure followed by the role of a cyber security professional is of a huge impact you know when you're talking about millions and millions of dollars lost due to a cyber attack you know that is the financial impact of an organization sometimes these organizations can go bankrupt and can can close down within a matter of months now when you need to have a, an effective cybersecurity professional working in the organization his role is of extreme extreme importance because uh, he ensures that such kind of financial impacts doesn't happen in the near future right so which means that uh, it is quite an impactful role followed by salaries i mean uh, when you're talking about the field of technology cybersecurity is one of the fields where uh, the kind of salaries which these professionals get are quite uh, high right so we are almost at the end of uh, my session that is uh, and uh, just to uh, end with uh, in collaboration with a specialist we are giving away a free 30 days trial version of the code red subscription platform which we have for every successful registration to cnd and ch course so every participant in our webinar today you know whoever registers for the cnd and ceh course with specialist is entitled to get their 30 days trial version of code red now to, just to give you an example uh, explanation about what code red is it is a continuous learning platform for all those cybersecurity professionals. Now, you know, when you complete your uh, certification and you get onto the real world, you have to ensure that you are always updated with the latest technology elements in the field of cybersecurity. And in order to do that, it is always uh, good for you to have a platform like CodeRed, which is going to keep you up to date with the latest technology which you're going to learn in the cybersecurity uh, industry. You know, as such and i'm sure that if you use this for the first 30 days you're going to be so hooked on and the platform itself is so sticky that you would subscribe for it uh, you know for the rest of the year and uh, originally this uh, uh, this subscription uh, costs 250 dollars uh, for the whole one year as such which we are going to give it away the first 30 days free of cost right so now uh, i'm at the end of my session uh, so that's uh, my email address feel free to write back to me at any point of time if you do feel that if you do have any doubts any concerns any issues uh, i'm more than happy to answer you that's my linkedin profile as well uh, i will be more than happy to uh, accept your invite as well and uh, yeah so that's it uh, from me um, i would now pass on to sergey sergey over to you Faisal, thank you very much for your presentation, for your speech. You're most welcome, Sergey. My pleasure. Well, I am presenter again, and I am going to comment what Faisal told to us, and will explain how I see updates in the CNT program as a teacher, as instructor. 
So I will continue. Я буду продолжать. Теперь уже на русском языке поясню, как инструктор, что у нас новенького на курсе CND и прокомментирую, что Файзл рассказал. Мы авторизованный учебный центр и о необходимости новой версии курса Файзл со своей стороны, как вендор, рассказал, мы согласимся, да, хакеры распоясались. А что еще бы добавить? Я бы вот что от себя добавил. В конце Речи Файзл сказал, очень много ролей можно играть в области кибербезопасности, так что не переживайте, без работы не останетесь. И действительно, я вам хочу вот что показать. Приказ Министерства труда Российской Федерации об утверждении профессионального стандарта специалист по безопасности компьютерных систем и сетей. Читали с такой стандарт? А он есть, и если его читать, тут написано, что вот смотрите, какие есть у нас тут трудовые функции, и что вы должны как специалист знать, уметь. Специалист по защите информации, эксперт по анализу, руководитель группы, и должен знать это, 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 умение это, это, это. Вот так вот. Ну, мы сейчас считать не будем, но идея понятна. Вот они, трудовые действия, необходимые знания, умения у вас должны быть. Если вы этими знаниями, умениями обладаете, то тогда вы специалист по безопасности компьютерных систем сетей. А еще точно такое же есть во всем мире и называется национальная инициатива NICE Framework. И тоже можно... Тут вот читать, изучать, и тут тоже, что вы должны знать, уметь, описание задач и описание ролей, которые играют специалисты по безопасности. Снова читать не будем, просто знаем, что вот оно есть. Так вот, что придумали хитрые секансел? Помимо того, что программа авторизована Министерством обороны США, похваленная и ANSI 17024 соответствует, и Сиканцев еще соответствует этому фреймворку, национальной инициативе. И есть сопоставление, вот мы на ИСУ соответствуем, сейчас будем это читать, и большой документ, но видите, что пишут. В соответствии с ролями, которые нужно играть, вы должны знать это, 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 уметь это, это, это. Добро пожаловать в CND. В CND, когда экзамен сдадите, в учебнике, вот видите, глава 6 и 12, вот про это написано. На экзамене эти знания проверяются. Здесь в 12 главе про это тоже написано. А это вот в 5 главе написано, на экзамене проверяется. То есть формально можно по профстандарту идти и говорить, вот мы учимся как раз-таки профессиональному стандарту. То есть нас программа курса учит не абы как прикольным заметкам, а учит конкретно тому, что мы будем играть роли в области кибербезопасности. Поэтому, конечно, хорошо учиться по такой программе. И особенность новой версии курса в том, что чтобы этой программе соответствовать, программу и инструменты, и учебник расширили, но при этом, как я с вами буду на курсе разговаривать, на этом курсе защиты от хакерских атак, что мы с вами неделю позанимаемся, и через неделю вы пойдете работать в Министерство обороны на федеральном уровне укреплять безопасность. Конечно, я буду ожидать, что у вас уже есть предподготовка. И вы либо где-то сами книжек почитали, либо к нам пришли на курсы, и эти четыре курса прошли. И вот тогда я с вами буду как специалистом разговаривать, и реально вы сможете подготовиться к тому, чтобы эти трудовые функции выполнять. Опыт показывает, что если вот этой подготовки нет, то тяжело все прелести получить от программы.
Поэтому хотя бы программу курса на сайте учебного центра посмотрите, убедитесь, что подготовка эквивалентная есть. Ну а когда на курс по хакингу придете, ну, соответственно, только после курса по защите, чтобы мы уже взламывали, имея необходимую предварительную подготовку. Лабораторные стенды. Мы знаете, какой на курсе используем? Не такой, как Файзал показывал, iLabs. Мы сами свой сделали стенд. Вот у нас VirtualBox, а тут все машинки. Windows 10, 9, 8, 7, сервера всякие, Linux. И они связаны фаерволами. Вот SmoothWall Firewall, PFSense Firewall. Это все виртуальные машины, они между собой взаимодействуют. И мы лабораторный стенд обновили и с ним работаем. Почему MyLabs не используем? Потому что нам нравится, что все машины наши, все под контролем. И в платформе используется Security Onion на курсе. Такая вот виртуальная машина, вот она Security Onion. Оно, с одной стороны, обычный Linux, но с другой стороны, тут видите, и в конфиг напишу, о, докер уже здесь установлен, есть интерфейс, тут Snort с графическим интерфейсом уже установлен, Вазух уже установлен. Конечно, хорошо изучать на заранее подготовленной платформе. А если какая-то хакерская техника, то используем, да, парад Linux, вот он какой. Но когда парад Linux, он под нашим контролем, мы что хотим, то делаем. Я к этому парад Linux, например, вот так вот подключаюсь через X-терминал. И студенты также делают. Вот я на том же пар от Linux, который только что вот так показывал. Мне приятнее такая цветовая гамма, чем здесь что-то печатать. А соответственно все то же самое. Вот как Файзл показывал набор социального инженера. SE Toolkit, давай лабораторную работу буду делать. О, SE Toolkit, давай мувископ взламывать. Один в один, так же как Файзал показывал, здесь могу продолжать. Что еще сказать? Еще прокомментирую, что учебник новый. Ну, здесь, конечно, может быть на вкус и цвет, но он стал более цветастый, красочный. И лабораторные работы расширились, больше стали. Естественно, мы теперь ориентируемся на то, что будем выполнять больше работы. Ну, соответственно, у нас хорошая подготовка будет. А еще, когда мы в учебном центре курс проводим, различные творческие задачи дополнительно решаем. То есть вот что-то изучили, а потом какая-то задача, ну, совсем неожиданная. Мы думали, что так не бывает, а оказывается, бывает. И такие творческие задачи дополнительно к программе курса, они лейтмотивом идут. Я ставлю студентам задачи, студенты решают. По учебнику выполнить хорошо, творчество проявить еще лучше. А в чем идея еще? В том, что теперь эти новые техники защиты и старые уложены в такой фреймворк, что давайте поучимся, как угрозы предсказывать, защищать, обнаруживать и реагировать. Если по программе курса FT, то это предсказание защита обнаружения сопровождается инструментами. Новая тема появилась, что нужно анализировать поверхность атаки. А есть инструмент, который вот такую карту построит, вы увидите, как предприятие может быть атаковано. Или определение киберугроз. Есть платформы для этого. Конечно, платформы большие. И сказать, мы сейчас одну пару поучимся и тут же будем экспертом по определению киберугроз, вряд ли. Но, по крайней мере, направление будет задано, мы будем понимать, что не только надо, как раньше, что-то там защищать, но и предсказывать, анализировать угрозы тоже хорошо. А как мы на курсе CND в новой версии будем учиться чего-то защищать? Я буду думать, что у вас уже есть хорошая подготовка, эквивалентная прохождению курса в тактической, стратегической защите. И что такое Active Directory, может быть, сильно объяснять не надо. Хотя по основным моментам пройдемся. А то, что не успели досмотреть, 
на курсах предыдущих, то на курсе CND рассматриваем, ну, хоть как-то попрактиковаться в защите хостов. Лапс развернуть, апармор развернуть, лабораторные работы такие есть. Помимо этого, мобильные устройства тоже же надо на уровне предприятия защищать, а у нас на виртуальном стенде мобильные устройства есть. Пусть оно у нас одно-два, но они гордые, вот один андроид, другой, вот они есть. Я могу их запустить, а потом этими андроидами управлять. Мне свой планшетник, может быть, жалко телефон под лабораторную работу отводить, а машины виртуальные их не жалко. И мы как будто бы это мобильные устройства предприятия, ну, учимся управлять, контролировать, что там. И про интернет вещей тоже говорим, что это такое, разбираемся, а потом как этим управлять. Разворачиваем симулятор интернета вещей, смотрим, как тут трафик гуляет, а как мы можем его защитить. В современном мире в облака уходят информационные технологии. Конечно, хорошо поразбираться и с архитектурой облачных вычислений. Это тема отдельного курса и даже нескольких но мы тему затрагиваем. Я думаю, хоть раз в жизни точно каждый специалист должен зайти в какой-нибудь АВС и что-то поконфигурировать, создать, удалить, изменить, тем более они дают какой-то бесплатный триал. Вот наша лабораторная работа, посмотрим, как у АВС в облаке дела. Ну, не то, что мы прям купим это облако, но, по крайней мере, мы паролим, мы получим реальный практический опыт того, как обеспечивать безопасность в облаке, где там создаются пользователи, как генерируются ключи, как применяются ключи к шифрованию данных в облаке. А если хотим обнаруживать, узнаете интерфейс? Вот после курса по защите, наверное, будете узнавать, будете говорить «да-да», мы будем проводить мониторинг, и если вдруг какая-то хакерская активность, обнаружим и среагируем. Естественно, есть решения, их много, и Сикасл ничего не рекламирует и не говорит, купите, купите такой продукт. У нас наоборот, широкий взгляд, мы говорим, что существуют решения, но дайте возьмем самое популярное, самое бесплатное, как можно на инциденты реагировать. Ну, такие техники новые в новой версии курса, так мы их будем изучать. Ну а что по экзамену изменилось? Да, у нас теперь новая версия, новые вопросы, и теперь CND обновленный, так же как обновлен экзамен CH, и раньше был ECSA, аналитик, теперь сертифицированный пентестер, ну а высшая техническая квалификация, которую Совет по электронной коммерции распознает, это мастер по тестированию на проникновение. Если максимальный экзамен сдавать, мастер ЛПТ такой экзамен сдавал. Ну, а, кстати, еще новость, буквально сегодня узнали, дизайн изменился сертификата по этичному хакеру, раньше вот так выглядел сертификат, а теперь, если кто сдавал, можете проверить, перекачать заново, так выглядит сертификат, вроде даже лучше стало. Это было что нового в CND курсе защиты от хакерских атак с точки зрения программы, с точки зрения сертификации и с точки зрения меня, авторизованного инструктора. Ну, есть и третья точка зрения, кто на обновление программы курса CND смотрит и свое мнение имеет. Это менеджеры учебного центра «Специалист», которые курсы продвигают на рынке, предлагают студентам. Не знаю, у нас есть менеджер в чате. Может быть, менеджер центра «Специалист» несколько слов в завершение скажет о том, как мы видим обновление курса, что мы можем предложить студентам. Сергей, спасибо. Друзья, меня слышно? Алло. Да, вас слышно. Я сейчас попробую вас найти в списке. Народа много. Я вас сейчас найду, сделаю презентером. 
Дорогие друзья, меня зовут Карпович Лариса, я являюсь менеджером нашего центра и хотела бы со своей стороны пригласить вас на наши курсы, которые ведет Сергей. Сергей лучший специалист, лучший преподаватель курсов по этичному хакингу и, посмею сказать, не только в России, но и в Восточной Европе, может быть, даже во всем мире. Это наш любимейший ценный преподаватель. Ближайшие курсы у Сергея стартуют уже 26 апреля. И далее уже только после майских праздников. Обратите внимание, что курсы сейчас ближайшей группы идут по особой методике обучения, открытый формат. На текущий момент в наше время открытый формат обучения – это самый оптимальный вариант обучения, так как присутствует максимально индивидуальный подход к слушателю. То есть при таком формате вы общаетесь один на один с преподавателем максимально много времени. Пожалуйста. Алло. Пожалуйста, обратите внимание, что у нас есть комплексные программы подготовки по безопасности. Есть программа специалист, сертифицированный специалист по информационной безопасности. Дипломные программы хороши тем, что... Это оптимальный вариант по цене и по получаемым знаниям. После обучения по дипломным программам выдается диплом о профессиональной переподготовке, помимо сертификата вендора о том, что пройдено обучение. Ссылочку на дипломную программу в чате кидаю. Если у вас возникнут какие-либо вопросы, пожалуйста, обращайтесь к менеджерам центра, экономьте свое время, чтобы подобрали максимально удобный вариант расписания, сориентируем по ценам, как лучше оплатить в рассрочку или дополнительно сразу с дополнительными скидками. Какие-то вопросы есть сейчас, друзья? Алло, слышно меня? Боюсь, не слышно. Всего хорошего, да. ждем вас на наших курсах. Да. Спасибо за информацию о дипломной программе, за выступление. Ну что ж, мы прошлись по программе нашего семинара, послушали, что сказал представитель EC Council, что думает о новой версии инструктор менеджера учебного центра. И, как всегда, в завершении формальное свободное общение. Если какие-то вопросы, то участники семинара, которые сейчас собрались, можем общаться и в чате, и голосом. Формально на этом наш семинар заканчивается. Всем успехов на пути специалиста информационной безопасности и до новых встреч.